Yeah, it's the time for the uh, hippie mass migration. We're migratory birds. We're freak birds. And we uh, flock down from the Himalayas to the vast plains of India. Mm -hmm. Tribe of Eddy arrives in Benares. Um, the houseboat scene you heard about. Take the train to Bombay. Mm -hmm. Probably go on the overnight hashish chillum ferry. <laughs> overnight coastal steamer. The most notorious boat in the history of Go. Uh, Richard Burton, the English explorer, was down there too. Yeah, a hundred years ago. L loved it too, yeah. We're not alone anymore. There's not like just a handful of us freaks on the scene, like you heard about earlier. There's now tens of thousands of Western freaks pouring into India. Mm -hmm. And that 24 hour ferry becomes a rite of passage, celebration, in itself, a floating. Deck class, hashish bash on the Arabian Sea. Unforgettable, maximum stoned happening. The grossest boat trip in tropical Indian history. Yeah. Well, uh, myself, I'm losing my mind <coughs> at the age of uh, 72 as I'm recording this. <laughs> That's one reason I'm recording it now. For my other baby boomers who are slipping into dementia, it's so subtle that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to review my notes a little bit. For everybody's sake, yeah. So uh, I sit against a bolster in the German bakery on one of those long, low tables, yeah. And I notice rampant and uh, serious confusion among demented hippie historians, about when Eddie first arrived in Goa. I must, I'm going to nail this down. Fact number one, Eddie did not go to Goa at all on his first trip to India. Mm -mm. In 1964. Mm -hmm. uh, the more brain damaged historians. They write that Eddie lived in Goa in 1963. I mean, this erroneous date three years too early. I mean, Eddie himself, he first mentioned that he heard of Goa in the summer of 1965 while he was enjoying Copenhagen. I mean, he'd already been to India, sure, but he did not go to go on that first trip. Uh, and here's uh, in a cafe in Copenhagen, 1965. 65, India freak uh, and Eddie have a little chat. Uh, the freak, like, uh, how did you like India? Eddie, uh, yeah, I liked it very much. Yeah. I'm going back to live there. Well, the freak asked him, did you ever go to go? No. On my first trip, I was wanting to see more Indian India, you know, not the the col uh, colonized parts of India, like uh, Pondicherry, the French had that, Portug Portuguese had Goa. Uh, well, uh, the freak says, look, when you go to Goa, uh, first go to Goa and, and go to Calva Beach. You'll be impressed. Uh, get off the train in Margot, take the bus uh, to the beach. Yeah. That's how Eddie... Uh, got hip to Culver Beach. And uh, to review a little bit, Eddie stayed with a native family on Culver Beach for three months during that winter, 1966, 1967. Hello. <laughs> winter season. On his first, that means first, it's a digit, but it signifies first, trip to go. Yeah. Oh. Well, okay, the hippie tribe, they start to show up and go in 1967, and uh, wait a minute. But when did the Portuguese depart? 
Well, I asked Eddie, and he explains, look, Earthmen at work like this. Uh, once a year, uh, the Portuguese f f sailed fresh troops into Goa uh, and uh, rotated the, the other troops out. And, well... This time, while the departing soldiers were getting on the boat, uh, uh, the Indian military crossed the state line and uh, attacked them by land, sea, and air. Three days later, the Portuguese surrendered. Uh, December 16th, 1961, this all came down. <laughs> Not long before us freaks started to show up. Yeah. Uh, well, the Portuguese, they saw colonialism coming to an end anyway, and uh, so they bailed from this coastal enclave. The French did the same thing in Pondicherry a few years later. But, I mean, the Portuguese ruled Goa for 500 years as a Portuguese enclave and uh, with Portuguese language, religion, law, mm -hmm. cuisine, architecture, mm -hmm. and that miraculous never decaying body of St. Francis Xavier is entombed in a magnificent Goan cathedral. He just won't go away. His body won't rot. They bring him out once a year and, you know. Well, uh, many Portuguese intermarried <laughs> with the luscious native women. Mm -hmm. And that's why 30% of Goans are Christian to this day. You know, and um, they have Portuguese names like my landlord, Albert de Sousa or Rodriguez and. uh with this abrupt departure uh, of the Portuguese colonels, uh, what? No more largesse for the natives in terms of like duty-free liquor. Everything, motorcycles, sewing machines, you name it. Shh. Portuguese diplomats, administrators, merchants, sailors, Christian priests, everybody, we're talking. Every single Portuguese gone. Shoo. In mass. So what happened then? <laughs> 1961. <laughs>